Siegel. You know, it's, uh, it's always my fate to uh, follow Rabbi Wolpe. Uh, last week at Sinai, uh, at the end of Ne'ilah, I was actually anticipating a call to the Bima. That was a very, very powerful address, Rabbi, and it's always, always an honor to follow you. Good evening, Erev Tov. I uh, think we all feel like family here. Uh, I arrived a year ago, and this community uh, brought us in and welcomed us in an extraordinary way. And my three kids go to uh, Sinai, which you know is partially per uh, uh, Persian, as you've heard. Uh, they all speak in various levels of Persian accents, both in Hebrew or whatever remains of it, and English. Uh, when we go to birthday parties, they, they'll sing it in English, they'll sing it in Hebrew. Then they'll say something like Tavalot uh, Mobarak or with a melody. So I feel very much welcomed by you and very blessed, as we all do, by this community. And you've heard it before, you'll hear it again, the most successful immigrant community in America. And it's an honor to be here. And your success has not just been material, You've built a tremendous community here. You're steeped in Jewish values of family, community, charity, education, commitment to Israel, to Jewish life, to your heritage and your legacy. Now, when I meet with individuals in your community and I hear your stories and the stories of your parents and their resilience, and the difficult dilemmas of leaving property behind, of lingering behind even though a revolution was coming because of family members, or some of you that shared with me experiences of what it felt like being young, young Jewish children having to go to, to, to school under the Ayatollahs and try to avoid stepping on the Israeli flag that, it was at the, that was at the entrance to the school. These are stories of resilience, stories that remind us of what has kept us going for 3,000 years, which are our values, not just our history, but our values of strong families, caring for one another, building strong communities, and taking care of our people. But you've heard tonight, with great achievements and great gifts also come great responsibilities. And this generation, this generation has to stand up to the challenges of these times, like our previous generations did. And if we think about the founding generation of the State of Israel in the late 1940s after the Holocaust, the decisions that were taken by David Ben-Gurion and others to take that leap into the unknown, to embrace uncertainty, and by doing that, to create a revolution in Jewish history that after 2,000 years we became subjects, not objects of history, but a people that became free, able to chart our destiny, and to steer our future. Now, this revolution came at a tremendous price because Israel in 1948 fought alone. And we remember this price every year, thousands of Israeli families as we go to cemeteries every Yom HaZikaron, every Memorial Day. And we're aware of that tremendous price. But that achievement of Jewish sovereignty also helped communities around the world, not just Israel. And the Jewish community in America became empowered like never before so that our fate has always been intertwined. And when we're strong, you're strong, and when you're strong, we are strong. Today, this generation, like 1948, faces tremendous challenges. 
One is internal, it's the continuity of Jewish life and the health and strength of Jewish communities everywhere. And the other challenge, of course, is the defense of Israel. The defense of Israel in a time of such uncertainty with a geopolitical hurricane that is wiping away everything we knew, every strategic pillar that we knew on all our borders throughout the Middle East. And we are facing challenges that we haven't faced since 1967, if not before. And with all of this, we have, and you've heard repeatedly today, and rightfully so, the overwhelming threat of a nuclear Iran, which has not stopped because of elections, which has not stopped because of summer vacations, and will not stop because of Christmas or New Year's, but will continue. And it's imminent, and it's very, very dangerous, not just for Israel, but for the future of the Middle East, for the future of the people of Iran, and for the future of the world. But you know this as well as we do. But what I'd like to remind you tonight, and to build upon some of the previous speakers, is that we have always known uncertainty. And the question on everyone's mind when we, the representatives of Israel, come and meet with you is, what will tomorrow bring? What will the Middle East be? And what will be with Iran? And the answer is, we are facing that uncertainty. And we have to face that uncertainty together. And we've had this uncertainty for 3,000 years. And we've never had a challenge without an uncertainty in our history. And we'll face this uncertainty like we always did, by doing the following. Building strong Jewish homes, building strong Jewish communities, maintaining our connection to the younger generation and making sure that the younger gen generation is meaningfully connected to us. We need to stand up for the defense of Jews no matter where they are, in Africa, in France, wherever Jews are in danger, we have to be committed to being there. Thank you. And we have to meet head on those tyrants calling for our destruction and to take them seriously. This is why we have to stop Iran before it's too late. We have to achieve a just society in Israel and as much as we can in the world around us and most important in Los Angeles, and this is for all of us in this room, this is our challenge to you, reach out to the other communities, both the Jewish communities and the non-Jewish communities, the Christian communities, the Muslim communities, non-Jewish Iranians in Southern California. Reach out and bring the message not just of the challenges that we face, but tell the story of Israel's achievements tell the story of the importance of what Israel is doing for the world, whether it's water security, or food security, or the environment, or medical technologies. Tell the story of why Israel is important for America, not just why America is important for Israel. We are important for one another. We work together on military to military projects. We work together on intelligence. We work together on a homeland security. We work together on airports and your ports in California. We work together on so many things, on cybersecurity, on IT, on innovation, on the next generation of manufacturing. This is the things that we do together with America. Tell that story. Don't only focus on the crises of the Middle East, but last but not least, strengthen your connection with Israel. Israel's not just a vacation destination. It's a pretty cool vacation destination, though. It is our homeland. It's the essence of our heritage, of our future. It's a place to invest in. It's a place to be vested in, to bring your children to, your businesses to, and your children's businesses to. It's an opportunity to become more involved in Jewish life. My friends, Israel and the Jewish people need you now more than ever before. And if you don't think we're linked, 
Think about the story of the California filmmaker who supposedly raised all this money in the Jewish community and the stories were that he was an Israeli besmirching Islam, leading to all these threats against America and Israel and sacking of embassies and killing of diplomats. When it turns out that the man was not Israeli, he was not Jewish, there were no donors, it was one big dangerous lie that continues to reverberate around the world that brings us all back to where we started. We're of the same faith, the same fate, the same past, the same future. And we have to stay very closely together in the years to come. I hope and I'm confident together with everyone in this room that we will face, this generation will face the challenges of our times in a way that will make us all proud. Thank you very, very much. I think, I think the Consul General deserves a standing ovation. We are... We are fortunate to have you as our partner. Israel is fortunate to have you here in Los Angeles, and we are all stronger with you. And if you have not gotten to know his staff and the Consul General personally, I encourage you to reach out to them. They are incredibly uh, innovative, hardworking, and they are here to serve our community hand in hand.